And this was something that the brothers of Yusuf did not have. So the number one uh, consequence of having envy and hasad in your heart is that it will create a false reality. You will not be able to see truth from falsehood. Your perception will be totally fogged and great. And this is one of the greatest consequences of hasad because when you have um, a fogged perception of reality, the action that you go on to do therein will also be based upon this understanding of reality. And that is why when people become jealous, they go on to do things that they regret. When they become jealous, they go on to do things that they regret. And that is why, you know, (laughs) I'm going to share a funny story with you at this point. Um... Without any mentioning any any details or whatever, but there's the story of a, a brother uh, in the United States. He got married, and um, you know, some years down the line, uh, he got married to a second wife. So he had two wives, and this is just around the time of Eid. Now, what ended up happening was uh, the brother had told his wife that he was getting married again, but uh, he didn't tell her who it was. So as an issue discussion, you know, the sister, she remained calm, she was, you know, um, I guess, in tune with what was going on, but something eventually came over her. So, he, you know, the brother tells his wife that, inshallah, on the day of Eid, that's when I'm going to introduce you to the other sister. <laughs> so, they get to the Musallah of Eid. And, you know, the wife asks, you know, who's, who's, who's the other wife that, you know, uh, that you got married to? <laughs> so, what ends up happening is, when Salat al-Aid starts, um, the first wife waits for the second wife to start her Salah in Salat al-Aid. And then as soon as the Salah starts, you know, she starts attacking her from behind and just takes her out <laughs> while she's paying Salah. Now... You know, I, I spoke to the brother thereafter, and, you know, this is like a, a big, big shock for him that the whole community found out what was going on. And, you know, it was a, a, a terrible scenario that could happen. And eventually, you know, the sister did regret it. Um, and, you know, this is just the reality of it, that when people become jealous, you know, this is what ends up happening, that you end up doing actions that you will regret. Now, I don't know if it was an appropriate example to mention here. I know sisters don't like talking about polygamy or not. But this is like one of the funniest examples that I'd ever come across that, you know, a sister waiting for another sister to start salah, and that's when you start beating her up. <laughs> Allah understand. So it creates a, a negative form of reality. You no longer uh, are sure of, you know, what you're doing. Number two, it makes a person negative and dark. And this is another great consequence of hasad, is that you will become an individual who is always negative. You will be an individual whose whole perception of life becomes very dark and gloomy. And this is an actual punishment that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives to those individuals who don't want to cure jealousy. Individuals who don't want to cure uh, hasad from their hearts, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives them this dark and gloomy life. And that is why you'll see that people who have been struck with jealousy, they always have these innuendos, they always have these hidden and personal agendas, you know, where they just want to cause as much pain and and hurt to other people as possible. And they think that by causing this hurt and pain to other individuals, they will somehow get this happiness back in their lives. But what they fail to realize, that the only way to attain that happiness is by curing the heart of this envy, by curing the heart of this jealousy. And that is the only way that happiness will come back into their lives. And this is one of the greatest lessons as to why we need to purify our hearts of jealousy, is because of this very point. That Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created us as individuals in this world, who while we are meant to worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala throughout the day, throughout all of our time, it was our sole purpose of creation, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wanted us to enjoy this relationship as well. And we sabotage the the pleasure in our worship of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala by not purifying our hearts of these diseases. Number three, a third consequence of hasad is the wiping out of good deeds. The Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam gave an example that envy wipes out good deeds just as a fire burns through leaves. 
I don't know if you've ever gone camping or if you've ever, you know, gone to a bonfire, but if you ever have seen leaves being, you know, sparked by a fire, they burn up very, very quickly, and in an instance, it's as if they didn't exist at all. And this is the example and parable that the Prophet ﷺ gave of Hasid, that an individual who has envy and jealousy in his heart, when he doesn't take care of it, it starts to burn out his good deeds until he is left with none of them. Now, Ibn Qayyim, rahimahullah, he goes on to explain this hadith. Is it merely just by that negative emotion that one has in the heart that the deeds burn out? Or is it a result of that envy and jealousy that those actions take place which will wipe out the good deeds? And this is where he brings that point again and he emphasizes it again is that it is not possible for anything to be in the heart except that it is manifested through the limbs. So if the heart is pure then it's going to have pure actions and if the heart is diseased then it is going to have diseased actions. So an individual whose heart is diseased with jealousy, his actions will manifest it. And up until he does not cure his heart of this disease, of this jealousy and envy, his actions will go on to show that very point. So he said to differentiate belief from the heart from the actions is not possible. But rather they go hand in hand. So thus the pure heart come with pure actions and the diseased heart come with diseased actions. So you want to be very, very careful that one of the consequences of jealousy jealousy and envy is that it starts to eat away at your deeds. This can result, you know, be as a result of you backbiting another individual, you scoffing another individual, you merely, you know, pl- uh, plotting and planning to sabotage another individual, or, you know, whatever it may be, it will wipe out your good deeds, and this is something you want to be very, very careful of. Now, on, the, on a related point to this, um, one of the classes that I teach for Al Maghrib is called the Collector's Edition. And one of the most challenging parts in teaching the Collector's Edition is a section that I put inside what Imam Abu Bukhari rahimahullah calls the jealousy of believing women. The jealousy of believing women. And in this section, he mentions two beautiful hadith that I want to share with you right now. Number one is when. Um, Aisha radiallahu anha is summoned by the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And this is a beautiful hadith, so please do pay attention to it. She's summoned by the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and he says, O oh, Aish, and this was uh, a nickname the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa had for her. He said, O oh, Aish, I know when you are angry and I know when you are content. So Aisha radiallahu anha, she responds, Ya Rasulullah, how do you know when I'm content and how do you know when I'm angry? And the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam goes on to say that when you're angry and upset, you swear by the Lord of Ibrahim. You say, by the Lord of Ibrahim, you will do such and such. By the Lord of Ibrahim, such and such will happen. And when you're content with me, and when you're content with me, you swear by the Lord of Muhammad. You say, by the Lord of Muhammad, you will do such and such. By the Lord of Muhammad, such and such will happen. And this is how I know when you're content and when you are angry. Now at this point you can think that you know um, what is an appropriate response you would give to the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam at this point. What would you say back? You know, as as a woman, you always have this urge and this want to have the final word, and this is something that women are actually notorious for. That you know they always have the last word in a conversation, and if a man ever thinks he has the last word, it's usually because a new conversation has begun by then. <laughs> So now what would you respond back to the Prophet Sallallahu Now Aisha radiallahu anha, she responds with something profound. She goes on to say, O Messenger of Allah, while the name changes on the tongue, the love in my heart always remains. While the name may change on my tongue, the love in the heart always remains. Meaning that just because they interchange the name Ibrahim with Muhammad, this does not in any way or means mean that I love you any less. But rather you are still the love of my life and I will always love you. Now this is the first hadith that Imam al-Bukhari mentions. So this shows that the attitude of the believing woman is that even when negativity overcomes her, she always remains positive. She doesn't fall into sin, but rather she stays with in the realms of permissibility and that is how she expresses her anger and number two uh, another lesson that Ibn Hajar mentions over here is that she ties it in
in with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That when Aisha radiallahu anha became angry, she would take an oath by the Lord of Ibrahim. And taking an oath, you know, in Islam is actually a, a form of worship. It is a form of magnifying and glorifying Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Because you will not take an oath by anyone or anything except that you want to magnify and glorify them and show how close and dear they are to your heart. And that is why in Islam we're only allowed to take an oath by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You're not allowed to take an oath by your mother or your father or by any other relative or any other thing that you cherish. But rather you swear